Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I'm Tan Eagles, photographer at Randall M. Roof. Today is Wednesday, January the 6th, 2016 AD. It is after 9 p.m., and I'm on Lexar's uh, website, www.lexar.com. And this video is going to be about. Uh, XQD cards. That's right, XQD cards. And the potential for very fast compared to standard availability today um, and how they could possibly be a great asset going forward in the future. So let's look at some of these uh, XQD cards. First of all, physically they're smaller. Well, not smaller. They're not as wide, put that way. They're not as wide as a CF card. Um, but, having said that, they're slightly bigger than SD cards. Um, but, they're a lot faster. That is going to be the thing. Just looking at what you see right here, look at this. Now, on the 1DX, or no, no, well, that helps too. It helps. Uh, One thousand times card helps on the one DX be able to record those images as fast as possible. But on the one Canios one DC, you have to have a one thousand speed card to record four K. And the reason I'm making this video is I recently did a video on the new Nikon, which is something I don't, normally don't deal with. But the new Nikon D five is coming out, and they have a thing where they have XQD cards, slots for two of them. And I started looking at the speeds of some of these cards, and I'm like, oh my gosh. Um, so my question is, well, can it have the, the XQD compatibility with its new uh, 1DX Mark II when it announced? Don't know. Uh, although after looking at the speeds, some of these cards, sure hope so. Um, now, keep in mind, I'm shooting a digital XT, which has 8 megapixel sensor. And let me pull my card out here. My card is a Kingston, 8 gigabytes, and it shoots 133 times, 133 times the speed of a CD-ROM. Now, keep in mind, when we're talking about times speed, for example, these... As you see here, is times 3600 and times 3500 and times 2933 and times 1400. Um, one, one X, or the one times speed, is what is required of a CD-ROM spinning to play audio uh, files. So when you listen to music on a, on a CD player, it's spinning on a CD. Or it has to spin a CD the equivalent of one time to play to play that music for you. Now a lot of CD players since then have gone you know, past the one time speed and can you know, can go four times, six times, eight times, etc. But um, one of the reason that these uh, cards are a lot better, a lot faster than CD ROMs. Um, is their speed. Now, CD-ROM, if you spin, um, I've seen several videos, um, the Mythbusters guys on their channel, Mythbusters on YouTube, and the Slow Mo guys, both on YouTube, have done videos where they speed up uh, CDs and DVDs past a hundred times, and it's just, they go so fast that they just, they spin so fast that they just literally fly apart. So the fact that uh, is a CD or a DVD or a Blu-ray disc can't go much more than about 40 times, 50 times speed. Um, I think 40, I think 48 times is the fastest one I've ever seen. I could be wrong about that. But my point is, um, I've never seen one of those 50 times. So they're, my point is, they're limited by the physicality the, the fact that they spin. Whereas with a computer chip, 
they can go a lot, lot faster because there's no physical movement. So I'm shooting, listen, I've got a Kingston Inky by 133 times, compact flash card, and I've never had a single problem with this card. The technology is that good. I mean, I've never had, there are times the camera has temporarily uh, shut down. But the, as far as the card goes, I've never had a single problem. Now, keep in mind, I, I take really good care of my stuff. I don't abuse it. Uh, or at least what I do. My point is, I try to take as good care of the, my equipment as I can. And my, my 8 gigabytes, 133 times card has done very good for a very long time. For several years. And 8 gigabytes for me... Uh, I've never shot. I've never shot an event where I used up the entire card. There was one event I shot where I filled up three fourths of the card. But I was just shooting pictures left, right of the event, and um, I literally took five or six thousand pictures. It, was, it may have been over six thousand pictures that day in one day. I mean, because there was just a whole bunch of stuff going on, and it still all fit easily fit within. Um, my my card. Now keep in mind, I've got a limit of three point five frames per second, and I'm shooting in JPEG. I'm not shooting raw. I have a capability to shoot raw, but I don't shoot raw. I shoot all my stuff to JPEG. So I shoot I shoot high resolution JPEGs. I use a full eight megabyte or eight megabyte, eight megapixels, and with a full eight megapixels, um, over five thousand pictures, almost six thousand, and I still had lots of room left over. Okay, so put that in consideration when you look at the size of these cards going up to 120 or 64 gigabytes, 128 gigabytes, 256 gigabytes. That is incredibly fast, incredibly, incredibly fast. Um, 256 gigabytes at 3,600 times speed is just wow. That's almost like wow. Um, now, the 1VC requires, again, I said this earlier, but the worst thing requires 1,000 speed, 1,000 times cards to do 4K video. These obviously way surpass all of that. Um, so, let's look at the cards here. Um... Well, so we got here, we got here 29, 33 times, and 1,400. This is the 1,400 first. I mean, look at this. Up to 210 megabytes a second read, write time, or 88 megabytes write time, 64 gigabytes up to 210 megabytes read, and 100. I mean, the speeds are just very, very fast compared to what's available today. Um, so I'm very impressed um, by what they're able to do if I were able to afford these cards. Uh, let's, go, let's go to the high end. 29, 33 times... I mean, just look, how do we, either way, 619, or $616.99 for 128, 128 gigabytes. First of all, that is an amazing amount of storage, uh, no matter how you look at it. And then the fact that it's going at 29, 33 times speed is very impressive to me, to say the least. Okay. Um, so it's just talking about how you can record 4K video at extended lengths. So, either one of these cards, whether it's 1400 or 29, 33 times, is going to be great. Um, the fact that they can max out at 29.33 is very, very impressive. 
Uh, now, obviously, the gray ones, which are the 1,400 times, are going to be cheaper because they're not quite as fast. Um, but still, nonetheless, very good. And the 2933, it's just going to be, that's just, wow. Um, you know, it's going to be amazing. Are they going to be compatible, or is the new Canon 1DX Mark II when it's announced, is it going to have, um, uh, XQD card compatibility? I hope so. With these speeds, absolutely, I hope so. Um, that's just, I mean, that's either one's, again, amazing, amazing, amazing. And, uh. Very impressive. I'm very impressed. Keep in mind, I'm still used to, or not used to, I still remember when we did film, and I can get 12, 24, 36, 48, or if I'm really lucky, 60, you know, you know a big roll of film that had like 64 exposures on it. That was very expensive. So I remember back in the day, 36 exposures was a standard roll. And so... The fact that with this you can record literally thousands of pictures at a blazingly fast speed compared to that. Very impressive. And it's only gonna be, it's only gonna keep getting better. Um bar, uh, unless World War Three or the second coming of Jesus Christ, it's only gonna get faster. So would I love to have some of these? Absolutely. Um they're very impressive, and um, 128 gigabytes at 29 and speed, that would be amazing, amazing, amazing. If I had money to blow, yeah, I'm sure, I'd buy it. Um, I'm sure the professionals who do high-end photography are going to, you know, like, afford these, can, are going <coughs> to grab, <them> <coughs> grab them up as fast as they can be made, so... <coughs> That's, you know, I don't know what else I can say about it. Um, now, I believe you're going to have to get a different card reader. Let's see if these are on here. Um, hold on. Uh, Check here. I believe you're going to get a different uh, the Q or XQD card per card, a different card reader, and are not, are not compatible with the standard SD or CF card reader. So, yeah, I believe you're going to get a different card reader, but that's not a big deal. And the fact that you can use it with uh, USB 3.0. That should make it even faster. So if you get the money or you need the, need something that's very fast and can get the money, uh, hopefully legally, <laughs> that's how I recommend getting it. Um, so obviously that's gonna, the Q or XQD. See, I keep wanting to say QXD. It's XQD. They really XQD is really a stupid name for these cards. I don't know what the XQD stands for, but maybe if I knew what it stood for. Letters stood for why they call it what they call it. It would make sense, but either way, they're very fast. They're very small. They're very high tech, and if you can afford them, uh, good for you. I hope this video decided help you decide whether hey, whether or not you want to buy these cards. I know the Nikon. I just heard earlier in review. I thought I was informed that. The Nikon D5 comes with slots for two XQD cards. Well, it turns out, from what I understand now, that the new Nikon D5 comes out with more than one option. You can either have CF card, two CF cards, or you can have two XQD card slots. So you have the option of buying a camera. And from what I understand is, if you want to swap out the CF card for an XQ, XQD card later, you can do that from what I understand. So, um, whether that's something you do yourself or you have to take in and have done, I don't know. I would think, though, if if money was no object, I would get the XQ, if I was an icon shooter, 
I would go ahead and get the uh, XQD card reader for your, inside your camera because it's going to be a lot faster than CF. Not that CF isn't fast, but this is going to be a lot faster. So keep that in mind. Uh, again, I just want to make a little video showing some of the new technology, which is really, really cool. So until next time, I'm Ken Neal's photographer for Rail and Roof. Thank you for watching every day. God bless you.